Hey guys, my name is Daniel Abend and I'll be showing you how to use my blueprint for creating a tunnel in the Vancouver Skytrain environment pack. So I'll start by just opening a new empty level and I'll just drag in the blueprint spline and just center that to the axis. So the main features are the spacing and the tangent scale of the actual spline mesh. We can select whether we want to have collisions or just query only, physics only, or collisions completely enabled. We can have an option to add a number of spline meshes that go along the spline as we place spline points. We can select how many meshes are spaced independently along the spline for use such as lights or uh, railings or those sorts of things. And then we have the option to orient these number of meshes to the spline. So we can orient the lights along the spline to the direction that the spline will be heading. So we'll start off by adding our track mesh. So we'll just search up the track and we'll go the exposed track for now. So at the moment, nothing's appearing. And even if you pull out the spline, there's nothing appearing. It's because we haven't set any spacing or tangent scale. So these meshes are 400 units long. So for spacing, we'll put in 200. And for our tangent scale, we'll put in 400. So this creates a nice smooth tangent as we place these scales along. Now we can change the number of meshes that are between this point and this point by changing the scale to 400, then we'll get less meshes between each points. And as we drag out, it organizes itself into a nice shape. Now the tangent scale. When we add a spline point here and move it sideways, we start getting these weird jagged lines along the edge. So if we change our tangent scale down, then they become less twisted and more obviously separate meshes. If we increase our tangent scale, then we get a nice spline. Now, we have the tracks, but we need to add the actual tunnel. So we'll add another spline mesh and we'll add the tunnel. So now we have a tunnel and a mesh that are completely following these splines. And as you can see, if we grab the end of this spline and just drag it all the way out, it'll just keep filling into these points. We can change the way that it's positioned and it'll just keep on choosing the way that it wants it to look. Great, so now we have a tunnel. So now we have our tunnel layout, but we don't actually have any lights illuminating the tunnel. So if we change to the view mode lit, then it's just completely dark. So the number of meshes is predetermined to be the blueprint for lighting. So if we set the number for eight lights along this tunnel, then the lights will be placed equidistant along the tunnel. If we change our view mode to unlit, you can see that these lights are not oriented to the way that the spline is facing. So we'll just tick the orient to spline and we'll see that they've now been placed nicely along the spline against the wall as they should be. If we move to lit mode again, then we can see that they're now shining nicely on the wall. A nice thing, if we wanted to add railings for instance, we just add a spline mesh and we choose our railing and let's go with this railing number one and it gets placed all the way around the edges and we can do the same for railing number two and as you can see it's been nicely put there following the curve and we'll add our third railing and there it is Now, you might want to add some meshes at the end because obviously you don't want to just have these open-ended tunnel edges. So we'll add our static mesh and we'll add our railing caps. So cap one, and we have a nice little cap there that ends this pipe all the way along. Same with this one here, 
and we can do the same with the other side depending on what we're using this tunnel for. So now our railings have caps on them at both ends. And that's all. Thanks for watching.